دونك هذه هذه معناتها الحقيقه معناتها هذه سي طريقه طريقه العمل وهذه عملنا لي سيميليشن اكزامبل هذا في 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 سيستم في نظام في نظام الكتروني و على كل حال هذا ال وشكرا انا اعتذر عن البرزنتيشن كانت باللغه الفرنسيه Uh, there is no problem, Mr. Khalid. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting presentation dealing with uh, pump scheduling in different manner. Uh, and now let's move to the next uh, presentation uh, about the energy efficiency in water pumping in Jordan by Mr. Bassam Al Hayek. Mr. Bassam, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have pleasure to present on behalf of GIZ uh, the work that was done in the past uh, few years on energy efficiency and water pumping in Jordan. I share this presentation with my colleague Daniel Bouche, the program uh, manager. Uh, as an introduction, we all know so far that uh, we depend uh, a lot on uh, energy for water pumping. This, is, this was obvious from the morning presentation uh, by Mr. Peterman, by Mr. Lingi as well. Uh, and that's basically due to the topography. As an example that was shared in the morning, I mean, uh, we are now located at uh, about 400 uh, meter below sea level. We have to pump water up to 1,000 meter above sea level. And this occurs in few locations in Jordan, in the north, in the middle, like the Dead Sea, and also from DC up north as well, uh, where there is a, also a change in elevation. And that's a huge amount of pumping, as you expect. In addition to the pumping to the major reservoir, there is uh, the, uh, a lot of uh, power to be uh, uh, put in in the distribution networks as well. Uh, and therefore, the water sector, as you know, consumes like 14% of the uh, energy uh, generated in Jordan, of the electricity, sorry, uh, produced in Jordan. The 14% uh, means like 2,000 gigawatt hour per year. Uh, more than half of that uh, power uh, uh, is actually consumed in supplying drinking water. So the remaining uh, part or the remainder goes for uh, either uh, wastewater pumping or wastewater treatment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, obviously, due to the immense use of energy in pumping, therefore any inefficiencies in water or as well as in uh, uh, in pumping uh, itself uh, will result in higher uh, cost as well as in high uh, CO2 uh, emissions. Therefore, uh, uh, a sustainable model and eco-efficient model has uh, to be uh, implemented to ensure sustaining uh, water supply uh, in Jordan, particularly with the rising prices of uh, energy uh, uh, around the world and especially in Jordan. Uh, this figure shows uh, how the uh, or where the water pumping uh, costs come uh, uh, compared with other sectors vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, energy consumption. As you see, uh, water pumping comes like 14% according to the Minister of Energy. Uh, uh, so it is just after the industry and the commerce sector. So as if water pumping is one of the major uh, economic sectors, let's call it, in Jordan uh, as such. Our approach in uh, identifying and, and working to reduce uh, energy consumption in water pumping, or in other words, making water pumping more eco-efficient, uh, was uh, basically a stepwise appro approach. Uh, we started with the initial audits, uh, uh, and followed by a countrywide assessment. I hear, and here I, uh, I would like to acknowledge also the efforts of our uh, contractors uh, uh, and, and, and co-financers. Uh, I mean, the assessments were done by Dorch, and uh, the, the studies were also co-financed by GIZ and by KFW as a countrywide assessment uh, for, for Jordan. Uh, the initial audit in Middle Governance showed promising results that was done as an exercise by GIZ. Then that's, uh, that was followed up by a countrywide assessment to see the overall uh, potentials for energy saving in Jordan from water pumping at least. Uh, uh, by doing this also the electromechanical aspects and the water flows, pressure, etc. were all uh, investigated uh, to, to see what technical measures uh, really need to be impl uh, implemented to improve the efficiency. 
the benefits, the eco-efficiency benefits, in other words, energy savings, CO2 reductions, uh, etc., were uh, estimated, and uh, uh, of course, we assume the use of improved technology, and that is to say, by imp by using uh, more energy efficient or new and advanced energy efficient uh, pumps. Uh, so uh, uh, the the technical measures were also. Uh, 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 accompanied by setting up institutional uh, measures that would be uh, required. Uh, and here I uh, would like to introduce, uh, for those who do not know, the energy saving, energy service uh, performance or energy performance contracting, the EPC, uh, sorry, there's a misspell here, energy performance contracting uh, models, uh, where the private sector would invest, would put in the money to renovate, to improve the infrastructure of the pump station, and then including, of course, uh, acquiring new pumps, eco-efficient pumps, uh, or energy saving pumps, and then uh, uh, the, 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 the private sector would take over the operation of the uh, uh, station for a defined period of time, such as five years, for example. And we'll, we'll give a couple of examples on that. Uh, and that's the, the EPC model, the energy performance contracting model, will bring up benefits for, for both the private sector and the public sector, as, as you will see later. So therefore, we introduced this model. With this, this was discussed by the, with the public sector with Waj, the Water Authority of Jordan, or Miyahona as a, a, a water utility, water company, and also then with potential private sector uh, as well. Pilot projects were started to show and to, uh, to demonstrate uh, the benefit and to, to test the, 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 the concept as well. So as I said, the EPC, the Energy Performance Contracting, involves energy saving company, a service company, which is an ESCO. So it would invest, it would put in the money because the government probably has other priorities than investing in water pumps at the moment. Then the remuneration or the payback for that, uh, such an investment by the private sector would come up from sharing the energy uh, uh, saved as well, the cost of the energy saved. And that provides, uh, uh, as, I, as I said, incentives also for the energy uh, uh, service company, for the ESCO, uh, to uh, really to do the best to save more. Because as much as it can save, uh, 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 it can pay back or uh, get the cost, uh, uh, return on cost or investment uh, uh, faster. The results of the overall assessment that was done, uh, the annual energy saving potentials from all the investigated pumping facilities, which were 10 well feeds and 15 pumping stations, uh, would reach up to 42.1 uh, gigawatt hour. Uh, that was a study that was completed in 2013. Uh, I should mention here that after the study, there was a, a, a new phase that was also uh, then uh, uh, started by WAJ and KFW, where they will uh, well, they will assess an additional, I think, 10 stations. But at least that study that was financed by GIZ and KFW reached to 42.1 gigawatt hour. Uh, saving potentials equivalent to 3.3 million euro uh, based on 2013 uh, uh, electricity tariff. Uh, basically, this number would increase, uh, you know, because you, as you know, the electricity tariff is increasing uh, on yearly basis until 17, until 2017. One third of the savings are, uh, can be accrued from 10 well feed pump stations, while two, th two, two thirds of the saving from 15 uh, uh, network stations. And as a result, the expected uh, reduction in CO2 emissions would be like 30,000 uh, tons per year. Now, I, I shed light on the, uh, uh, on the two pilot activities that were carried out so far. The first one, uh, although that was also coinciding with us initial audit times, but Libquriya, al Baquriya pilot activity in the Wadi Salt, uh, in the area of Salt, uh, uh, that was a partnership, that's a pumping station, it used to have uh, its own pump and pumping management and so on, where at that time, uh, the pump manufacturer, Wheeler Company, the German manufacturer of pumps, uh, uh, joined uh, uh, this activity with the Water Authority of Jordan. Uh, and the aim was to reduce, of course, to, to, to put in two new pumps from Wilo and uh, replacing two pumps from Waj. And they kept also two pumps as standby from the old ones. The specific energy consumption uh, represented as kilowatt hour per cubic meter was reduced by 33.5%, which is a great, uh, 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 seen as a uh, great achievement, uh, from 1.7 kilowatt hour per cubic meter to 1.15, basically as an average for whole year average. 
uh, and that would result in saving or result in saving 1.5 gigawatt hour per year. Uh, the cost at that time, when the tariff was 0.043, I mean, that was the very subsidized uh, electricity tariff for the water sector, the saving was 65,000 uh, euro per year. Uh, so that study was in about 2010, uh, I guess. And, and the results, of course, of that activity uh, would save also about 1,000 ton of CO2 per year. Now, the most recent and uh, more uh, intensive energy saving uh, would be in the Wala Lib, which is a pilot activity that was signed in 2013 uh, between the Ministry, uh, Waj, Miyahuna, and also UNESCO. And the ESCO in that case, uh, formed by NGCON, the engineering consulting company in Jordan, and uh, or one of the engineering consulting companies, and uh, uh, it's called NGCON, and Wilo as well as a manufacturer of pumps. Uh, the investment there is uh, about uh, three quarters of a million euro uh, in renovating the pumps of two stations, the Wala and the Lib, um, uh, south uh, uh, west of uh, Madaba. Uh, I mean, these two stations are used to pump water from Hidan wells uh, to, to the Wala and then from the Wala to Lib and then from Lib to, to Madaba, let's say. I'll show a graph uh, showing the schematic of the uh, pumping. Uh, uh, lines there. Uh, so uh, what is important is that uh, in each station, four new pumps will be installed, energy saving pumps, and uh, to save the energy uh, by about 10 to 20% roughly. Uh, however, uh, the saving, uh, uh, you can say at uh, an average of 9 million cubic meter per year of pumped water at a tariff of 0.078 uh, 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 tariff in 2013, that is, the saving would reach about nearly three uh, 300,000 uh, euro per year, or a little bit less. Uh, the reduction is about 2.5 or 2,500 tons per, uh, per year. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that during 2014, during the past year, all the preparation work, the agreements, the supply, commissioning, and so on has been accomplished. And they started as of 1st of January, they started operating the new pumps at these two stations uh, now. There will be a, an official inauguration uh, later on in spring uh, to uh, demonstrate the, uh, the, the, the new saving there. This shows very roughly the uh, uh, the, the water flow from uh, Wala and Lib, from Hidan wells that you see on the left uh, corner. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so the, from the wells, we pump, or they pump the water to the Wala, which is a reservoir, an uh, intermediate pumping station, and then to the Lib. And from, from the Lib to the water reservoir of Madaba on top of the mountain there. And then by gravity uh, to the residential areas of, of uh, Madaba. This is a very draft uh, schematic. There will be a, a modified one coming up later on. Uh, uh, so the, the, the results from these experiments or these two pilot activities uh, show that uh, performance-based contracting uh, uh, has been piloted, uh, has been successful. I mean, we saved in the Korea case uh, like 65,000 euro per year at the old tariffs uh, and, and while the saving are much, are double now, are twice as much. Uh, while in Wala and, uh, and, and Lib, uh, the savings which we estimated from the design, etc., would be in, in, in the range of 20%, but in practice, I mean, when they started the operations and tested the pumps, and now they are on, uh, they were operating before the, the snowfall and before the heavy snow that came in, uh, 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 gave uh, promising results exceeding, uh, I mean, the 20-25% ceiling of savings. So it would, it would very well reach also 30%. And that will be, most, I mean, verified during the uh, first uh, few months of operation as well. Uh, uh, so that showed that PBC, the performance-based contracting, uh, can provide good platform for improving performance of water services. Uh, mutual trust, transparency, good governance need to be established between the two or three parties, the public and private, and also uh, any engaged uh, party in contracting. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, we know that the pumps are very uh, crucial. Uh, I mean, you need the energy saving pumps, but also uh, to sustain this in the future, uh, you need to ensure that such pumps are really low maintenance pumps or uh, no maintenance pumps if possible. I mean, for about 
10 years or so. But then also the monitoring and data management and uh, uh, making use of uh, this data is, is, uh, is, is, is really crucial for sustaining the pump stations. So it's not only putting in new pumps, but also maintaining the long-term operation of such pumps. Therefore, the capacity building, the skills, the data management, and monitoring the KPIs that were presented early in the morning, uh, like the kilowatt hours per cubic meter or kilowatt hour per cubic meter head, uh, uh, are really important to see how the uh, uh, performance is changing uh, by time. Uh, uh, so we recommend uh, to follow up this success in, uh, I mean, these practices, uh, particularly the PBC, the performance-based contracting, in other stations. And as far as we know, the Water Authority is heading at looking at other stations uh, and, and putting and they are putting in the designs for others. And maybe for our case, even in Madaba, the Wala Lib, we would be there is an interest, and we would be looking at even improving the efficiency of the pumps of the well feeds themselves, the Hidan well feeds, so that the whole cycle uh, uh, would be covered completely uh, from, from the wells to the, uh, to the distribution uh, as well. Um, I won't go through these, but uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm really done, but just. Uh, the impacts on sustainability, of course, uh, uh, we would see that PBC could, can, can be, can be uh, uh, providing a good tool for the future, especially for the private public uh, uh, participation in tackling water utilities and improving the performance. Uh, uh, the, the experiment, the pilot activities uh, contributed so far in raising the know-how of operators of the importance of energy in water, and this nexus energy uh, for water uh, uh, has become, uh, you know, uh, 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 more on the surface. Uh, uh, people are more aware of uh, energy water nexus as well, and the importance of um, optimizing the use of energy in water pumping as well. Uh, and that overall improves the uh, uh, efficiency of the uh, uh, of the service as water pumping or drinking water pumping. Again, rollout in Jordan is possible, and we know that there are uh, at least, I mean, the studied, uh, the investigated uh, uh, pump stations from that study in 2013 were 10 and 15, 10 in the well feed and 15 networks, and those resulted in 42, as I said, gigawatt hour energy saving potentials, 33.3 million euro savings using the tariffs of 2013, and uh, that would uh, end up or give us a saving of 30,000 tons per year of CO2 emissions. Uh, uh, um, having Waj, Mia Huna, uh, uh, as a company and other company in Jordan, water companies, Jordan, Aqaba, and others, uh, picking up on, on these pilot studies is crucial for, uh, for saving uh, the kilowatt hours in the water uh, sector. Thank you very much for any question. I'm available by uh, email or also after the break. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bassam. Uh, you show us that in Jordan there is a very big potential. You start uh, actions, and uh, we have to just to encourage Jordan to go ahead and to to make this, uh, this practice, uh, uh, to make uh, this action in practice. So we go to the next uh, presentation. It's uh, about the switching from pumping zone for to pressure zones. This case study of Nablus City by uh, uh, Amal Hudhud from Palestine. The floor is yours, Mr. Amal. Shukran, Abdel Latif. Assalamu alaikum. I want to speak Arabic. The slide will be in English. So I will speak in Arabic, but the slide in English. زي ما حكى الأخر عبد اللطيف ما موضوعنا أن هو التحويل من مناطق التوزيع لمناطق بريشر زون مناطق الضغط هذا عمل مشترك مع زميلي المهندس صلاح شيخ برضو من البلدية بدائرة المياه المهندس صلاح هو مسؤول الدراسات والمشاريع وبشرف على المشاريع أنا مهندسة بيئة بيشتغل في التخطيط الاستراتيجي للبلدية بشكل مبسط البرزنتيشن راح تكون نحكي شوية عن منطقة الخدمة بعدين راح نحكي عن المشن تاعت رسالة دائرة المياه والصرف الصحي الوضع الحالي لما قبل ما نتحول من مناطق الضخ من مناطق التوزيع لمناطق الضخ راح نحكي عن المشروع 
اللي هو اوريدي حولنا المشروع ووتر لوس ريدكشن كان هو النقطه التحول لمناطق الضغط كمان الانرجي سيفنج اللي هو موضوع طبعا الجلسه ايش تحديات لانه مزبوط كل مشروع اكيد له ايجابيات له سلبيات في النهايه ما بكون شيء كامل فاحنا برضه بناخذ الدروس والعبر للمشاعر القادمه وان شاء الله يعني نشارككم بهذه التجربه واللي هي الدروس المستفاده منطقتنا منطقه الخدمه احنا ما بعرفش الخريطه اذا هي قديش واضحه احنا في مدينه نابلس هي في شمال الضفه الغربيه دائره المياه اللي هي تابعه لبلديه نابلس تقدم الخدمة ل 200 ألف ساكن 200 ألف هنا بيشملوا سكان المدينة بالإضافة لعنا المخيمات مخيمات اللاجئين في عنا أربع مخيمات وبعض القرى اللي حوالين المدينة طبعا أكيد بفلسطين وضع المياه هو وضع خاص فمنحاول يعني كبلدية هي مش من اهتمام يعني لا يعني بس حدود المدينة ولكن نتيجة الوضع احنا في بعض القرى برضو بنعطيهم خدمة المياه 100% الناس واصلتها مية ولكن طبعا هذا بشرط ان هي ليست مستمرة هي متقطعة يومين لثلاث ايام لبتوصلهم المية بالنسبة لوضع الصرف الصحي لان هي كدائرة مياه برضو بتقدم خدمة الصرف الصحي 97% من الناس مخدومين بالصرف الصحي و3% فقط بيستخدموا الحفر الامتصاصية نتيجة طبعا لتواجدهم في مناطق ممكن عالية اللي رح نحكي برضو على طبيعة المدينة بالنسبة لمعالجة المياه العادمة 50% من المياه اللي بتم تنتج في المدينة يتم معالجتها بمحطة تنقية مستخدمين طبعا وسائل التكنولوجيا الحديثة وال 50% الباقيين ان شاء الله بال 2017 2018 رح تكون شغالة فنوصل ل 100% من معالجة المياه اللي عم تنتجها مدينة نابلس بالنسبة لعدد المستفيدين أو عدد المشتركين عندنا تقريبا أربعين ألف مشترك إحنا عندنا المشترك هو قديش في عندنا ووتر ميتر يعني عداد الاستهلاك بشكل متوسط ثمانين لتر باليوم والإنتاج عشرة مليون عشرة مليون من من الينابيع والأبار إحنا نعتمد على الينابيع والأبار عشرين في المية من الينابيع من الينابيع نأخذها وثمانين في الأبار طبعا الينابيع هي مصدر يعني مش كتير موثوق فيه لأنه بيعتمد على الأمطار يعني الموسم ما في مطر ما بنقدرش يعني نأخذ وبالتالي بزيد المشكلة شح المياه كدائرة المياه اللي بتقوم بتقديم خدمة المياه والصرف الصحي في عنا ثلاثمية تقريبا حوالي ثلاثمية وعشر موظفين باربع دوائر يعني رئيسيه اللي هي التشغيل والتشغيل والصيانه الدائره الماليه بالاضافه لمحطات التنقيه والمشاريع الجديده والاشراف على المشاريع والدراسات نسبه التحصيل 60 ل 70% من طبعا في بعض الاحيان حسب طبعا اكيد الوضع السياسي والوضع الاقتصادي عم تنزل اقل من 60% واحده هاي من التشالنجز لدائره المياه في تقديم الخدمه الكوست 1.6 دولار طبعا هي تعتبر مدينة نابلس بالنسبة حتى لمدن الضفة وفي فلسطين من أغلى التعريفات التعرفة. طبعا هلقيت رح نشوف شو السبب وقديش نسبة الطاقة اللي بناخدها في الكوست اللي بنبيعها بشكل متوسط يعني 1.8 اللي بنبيعها للمواطن طبعا هاي من بيعها بشكل متوسط ولكن في فئات بالذات الفئات الدنيا ما بتبقاش 50% ل 70% من التكلفه اوريدي هنا بيدفعوا في حاله احنا بنقول لما كلهم يدفعوا ولكن 70% اوريدي دائره المياه ما بتغطي حتى تكاليف الاوبريشن والمينتيننس الصيانه والتشغيل طبعا الميشنز انا ممكن ما بدي امشي عليها بس كاي دائره طبعا هي تقدم خدمات المياه والصرف الصحي وباقل بشكل بيئي بشكل اقتصادي يكون مقبول للسكان شويه صوره ممكن ما تكون واضحه هاي نعطيكم فكره عن طبيعه نابلس الجغرافيه احنا هي منطقه جبليه تقريبا الفرق الارتفاع ما بين اوطى نقطه ممكن بالخريطه يعني ممكن بالصوره مش كثير واضحه تقريبا 400 متر ما بين وسط المدينه وبين الجبال طبعا الناس منتشرين برضو على الجبال بالإضافة إحنا هون داخل الآبار الموجودة اللي بتخدم المدينة اللي إحنا قلنا 80% من إنتاج اللي بناخذها من الآبار موجودة خارج حدود المدينة وطبعا على ارتفاع طبعا أقل يعني ما بين 10 ل 12 كيلو متر المسافة ما بين المصادر الآبار وما بين الوسط المدينة برضه تقريبا ممكن كمان 200 إلى 300 متر فرق الارتفاع طبعا هاي هي اللي بتوصلنا للمشاكل للمشغلين الشبكة هي واحدة المشكلة الرئيسية انه احنا في فرق كبير في الارتفاعات فكانت المشكلة انك انت في بعض المناطق بدك 25 بار يوصل الضغط في الشبكة ل 25 بار او 250 متر 
في شبكة وهذا طبعا أدى إلى مشاكل كبيرة ما كانش عندنا كانت هي شبكات التوزيع بشكل عشوائي ما فيش ما فيش مناطق ضغط يعني ممكن انت نفس المضخه تشغل على مناطق يعني مختلفه 200 متر 300 متر 400 متر فرق في الارتفاع نفس المضخه طبعا لان احنا بنقول خط متقطع كانت هاي منطقه التوزيع اليوم دورها المنطقه الثانيه نفس المضخه تشتغل على اكثر من مناطق هاي واحده من المشاكل طبعا كان في انرجي صرف كبير للانرجي بهاي الطريقه بالإضافة إنها كانت الشبكة قديمة وبالتالي الخطوط كانت أقل من يعني المفروض فبالتالي كان يعني الدياميتر أقل من المفروض يكون له أدى إنه صار في عنا هيد لوس عالي طبعا هيد لوس أوريدي مربوط برضو بالإنرجي بالإضافة زي ما أنا حكيت إنها كانت نفس المضخة تخدم أكثر من منطقة بمخ 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 هاي المنطقة باختلاف في الهيد والكيو نفسها تضلها تشتغل وهذا طبعا أدى على أدى إنها كانت تشتغل بإفشنسي كتير قليلة كلهم هذا ادى انه احنا عملنا ايفالويشن لهذا الوضع وكانت واحدة الحلول طبعا هي بتمويل من الالمان تمويل من البنك الالماني الكي اف دبليو طبعا يعني احنا هنا في يعني في شكر خاص يعني لاي حد هون الماني للمساعده الالمانيه لانها كانت فعلا هي من اكبر يعني اكثر مدينه يمكن صار في هدم او اكبر مشروع كان في منطقه الضفه الغربيه 20 مليون يورو حتى احنا نقدر نتحول من مناطق يعني الضخ المباشر الى مناطق البريشر زون طبعا هو مشروع كثير كبير بلش هذا المشروع بال2007 وانتهى بشكل رئيسي بال2011 وهلقيت رح نحكي يعني تم تقييم هذا المشروع وشو المجرز اللي تم اخذها المين يعني من, من الاشياء الاساسيه او حتى لهذا المشروع انه احنا نقلل الفاقد طبعا الفاقد 40% واحنا عارفين طبعا هو الفاقد نتيجه للضغط نتيجه للاهتراء المواسير البريشر كثير عالي لاحظ كانت التارجت او الهدف نوصل ل 25% والانيرجي كونسومشن كانت 0.93 كيلو